Vogue on. Are we sorting the broadcast here? Is this working? Let's see. It's going through. Oh, it looks like they're coming through. So we'll just wait until a few people appear. And then we'll have a bit of a chat. And see what's going on for people on this beautiful Monday morning. It's nice and bright. Don't know if people have had their morning walk already. Or if you're going to do it later when it's a little bit brighter. Um, but yeah, hopefully you are getting your, your daily walk in. It's really important. And let's take care. And what's going on? Okay, we are going through. That's fantastic. That's what we want to see. And good morning, Victoria. <laughs> Hope you're getting your uh, joy quotient for the day, making the most of things. And Jackie's in the house. Lovely. Just see if a few more people are popping in, and then we'll get started. I've had all this virus and working at home and things has finally got me connected to the internet and my phone. I feel like I'm married to my phone now, um, which, you know, I always uh, sort of laughed at other people that were using their phones all the time and thought, well, I don't have to be like that. But here I am attached to my phone. But there we go. That's all right. Um, at least it means we can be connected to everyone. And uh, and that's what it's about at the moment, isn't it? Um, I think we're still trying to work out what the sort of contact is going to be over the weekend. Um, hopefully, we can start, you know, being more available at the weekend, perhaps for um, for sort of well-being chats and such. Um, that'd be really good. Yeah, and just keep things together. And Marie's in. Marie's in. Nice to see you, Marie. Good stuff. Hopefully, we'll get back up Thundersley. Uh, at some point. I think the idea is that some people are going to pop in and do some watering um, just to keep everything green and not drying out. And uh, But yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting back up Thundersley um, and Westcliff. And I haven't worked at Shoebury for ages, so um, any updates that come out about Shoebury and how the garden's looking, um, I'm really looking forward to that. That'd be good. And um, I haven't worked that much at Rochford, but I know, uh, know the guys over there and they're Top top chaps. It's uh, really good. Really good. Um, okay. Well, you may notice I am wearing my hat indoors. It's very cold in my study, uh, which is at the front of the house. But I can see the sun coming out. It's starting to get nice and bright. Um, see a few people going past on their bikes a little while ago. That's good. People getting their exercise and their fresh air. Um, Oh, in the background, you might notice my my grumpy lion painting. Not sure if you'll be able to see with the with the light, but he's got this real good uh, "Don't mess with me" look. And uh, sometimes when I'm not feeling that great, he uh, reminds me to sort of be tough. So, but yeah, it's my angry lion painting. <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to have a, a bit of a chat this morning about, um, I suppose, the art of conversation um, and, and talking. Uh, at the moment, uh, it's really important to be able to communicate your thoughts and to, to encourage other people to be able to express themselves as well. So I'd like to talk about um, what we can call active listening. So we all 
listen all the time. Um, but when we talk about active listening, it, it's something that's coming from, from talking therapies. And it's a way to um, talk, further a conversation, deepen a conversation, get to the, the truth of the matter with things. Um, and it's almost like playing, playing roles. You can consider it as sort of like therapist and client or, um, you know, sort of talker and listener. Um, so if you're listening, you, you, you're playing the role that you're, you're going to be genuine and, and listen and try and help the person. And the person talking is going to play their role of, of trying to get help. And if you think rather than just a casual conversation where you, you're throwing in all your needs and wants and, and, and all your stuff, if instead you, you play those two roles, um, it's specifically to help someone. Yeah? So it, it focuses things. And um, so I'd like to talk talk about being the role of the listener um listening to someone in in the art of conversation and uh there are lots of ways to show that you're you're with someone and and really listening to someone and, and paying attention to someone so you know try and show interest if, if you're listening to someone um sort of observe their behavior um is their sort of tone their normal tone uh, pattern of speech, you know, things like that. We we pick up on a lot of social non-verbal cues um, in, in in conversation, and uh, and you can you're probably more sensitive to that than you realise. So it'd be quite good to tune into that sort of follow your instinct when you're um, when you're talking to people. So I mean, the most important thing to do if you you know going to be listening to someone and in this way of taking a role where you're, you're concentrating on, on trying to help someone. Um, main thing would be to avoid interruption and distraction. Um, so, you know, pop the phone down, put it on silent, turn the telly down, turn it off, um, turn the music off, you know, whatever is going to keep you um, present and, and, and listening and, and not distracted and concentrating on the words and what someone's not saying. And um, and what their body's telling you, yeah. So that will help you keep with the person, sort of staying, as I say, sort of present and with them. So non-verbally, there are so many ways to to show someone that you that you're listening, um, which, as I say, they'll pick up on either subconsciously or consciously. So you know, good eye contact. Um, I'm I'm coming from a, a talking therapies counselling background. And, um, you know, you want to give someone eye contact, but you don't want to be overbearing with your eye contact either. Um, I don't lock eyes with someone for 50 minutes in a counselling session. You know, you, you look up, you look away, you, you sort of focus on things. And sometimes that can focus my, my hearing, my listening. I can listen more for, for tone and, and speech patterns and maybe what's not being said, subtext. Um, so that's an interesting thing. So have, you know, line of sight with your person. Don't have your back to them. Um, you know, there are lots of uh, in non-verbal communication, what you can call paraverbals. So that's your nodding, uh-huh, you know, sort of facing the person, facial expressions. Try not to look too horrified if someone's explaining something to you. Um, and again, that's is putting your stuff to the side. So you're just really listening to the person and trying to empathise, trying to um, feel oh, what must that be like um, for the person that's going through something, yeah? So so noticing, and again, try and avoid sort of closed body language. Um, I know that is the natural position for some people to sit in with their arms folded, but um, I think we can recognise sort of closed body language when we see it. So try and present with, you know, open body language. Um, try not to be overbearing and, and try not to be submissive. Again, you're, you're playing this this helper role. And if you think what people are like when they're helping you, they're um, they're paying attention to you, aren't they? Yeah. So it's you know when when you're listening to someone, it's not being it's trying not to be too self-involved and trying to um, trying to listen and be with the person. So there are lots of different questions you can ask someone if you're trying to find um, 
find out what's going on with them or just open a conversation. And these can be open or closed questions. Um, or, you know, open questions are, are just as it as it says, so people can, you know, ramble on stream of consciousness, what they want to say. Closed questions, you're locking someone down to a yes or no answer or a definitive answer about something, yeah? So open questions, um, shall we talk? Um, what are you up to? Um, what do you think about that? Yeah. Um, what's your thinking on that? And and other closed questions like, um, you know, what's your name? Where were you born? Um, do you cope well with change? Do you know where your medication's coming? Um, so if you're trying to get something specific about someone, you can use these, you know, closed questions. And um, and similarly, if you you know you want someone to go off a bit, you know, you can use the open questions. And um, you know, if you open, if you use open questions, you may well land up somewhere you you weren't expecting. But you can always, you know, um, use your skills to to bring people back to back to the back to the conversation you were starting at. So another part of acting listening is just uh, reflecting. So so someone's telling you something is just saying exactly back to them what they've said. And it's good because it allows them a chance to hear their own words and um, and and to reflect and, and to look at that again. And and again, it shows that you're you're listening. So say someone comes in and says, you know, I'm feeling really down at the moment. Um, things aren't going too great. I felt like this for a couple of weeks. Just repeat back to them, um, you know, what they've said. Oh, you know, you said you're feeling down and um, that's been going on for a couple of weeks. You know, it's very basic, but it shows shows you're listening. Um, and I would say clarifying goes with that as well. So, if again, if someone's saying something to you or they're rushing things off in a bit of a stream of consciousness, just ask them to stop and, and repeat back, you know, sort of maybe, you know, in the, in their words or, or your words, just clarify, oh, you know, did you mean this? Um, are we talking about that? Yeah. Do you mean you feel like this? Um, and then you're not running away thinking this is the fact when that's the fact. Yeah. And again, it, it shows you you're paying attention and being with the person and, and trying to find the, the truth of the matter. So, you know, you can probe. Um, again, if we're thinking about these these roles of uh, of helper, it's not about you. It's not about sort of digging and and fishing just for information or anything. It's about stuff that's going to help the person with the situation. So it's okay to probe around that without sort of being nosy as such. And that is a fine line. Um, I do appreciate. But if you're concentrating on trying to find this truth um, in thought or feeling for someone. Then, then it's not a bad thing, really. You know. Um, so again, we want to signal encouragement to people. Um, people aren't always confident in uh, in, in expressing themselves and, and opening up. Um, with the whole situation at the moment, there might be some people who are opening up for the first time. Um, maybe they've compartmentalised all their stresses and strains through their lives, or this is just something so different that they um, might need to talk about things. So, so we're using all our active listening skills and to signal encouragement, you know, it, it's just little things like go on oh, and then, so, um, what happened then, anything else. It's keeping the conversation going as long as the other person wants to and need to. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. And uh, again, in this sort of helper role, we're looking at a time when a lot of people have volunteered to potentially be doing sort of listening support, well-being calls, check-ins with people. And some of these might be strangers or people that you're meeting online through support groups and things. And everyone's going to have their own experiences, personas, personalities, public-private lives and things, cultural differences. So avoid, you know, your own prejudices and and beliefs about people and things, um, especially if you're talking to new people or people from different cultural backgrounds, um, because you want the person talking who's expressing themselves, who's seeking help. You want them to be authentic, yeah, because the more genuine and honest and free they can be, 
um, the more they're going to express themselves and hopefully the more you can help them or refer to someone that can help them. So, you know, if even if something's culturally alien or different, you know, use your empathy, um, trying to feel what something's like for that person and um, and that will increase understanding for the, for the two of you, but particularly for the person that um, is looking for help. So you may be having a conversation with someone, again, I'm framing this kind of in a, in a therapeutic way. Um, you can break up a conversation almost into chapters or chunks. So you might cover a bit of a topic and then just summarize for the person what, what you've been, through, what you've gone through there, what you've discussed, what you've, what you've come to, what agreements have been made. Yeah. And if you do that for each chunk of the conversation, then you can bring it all together as a whole. Um, and if you're, if this is a conversation about sort of trying to find things that will help you, either practical or sort of emotional, things like that, you know, it's good to almost sort of log your solutions of, um, of each sort of chapter or topic that you've covered. And then you've got, uh, you've got data, you've got sort of evidence to go by and things don't get just lost in a conversation. So, again, if, you, if you're listening to someone, we, we, we can, it sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot as well. If we use our non-verbal communication and, and look at their non-verbal communication, um, you might ask someone, oh, you know, how are you doing? And they say they're okay, but you, you can tell from the body language they're, they're sort of really, really far from okay. And you can use your insight and you, your listening skills to say, you know, I, I hear that you're saying you're, you're okay. But um, but you you don't seem okay, and then you can start having your conversation. Yeah, using your reflecting, using your listening skills, um, again Socratic questioning. Just keep asking why, how, how, why um, to everything, because um, quite often a deeper answer to to any answer we're given to someone. If someone says, "How are you doing?" you say, "Okay." Well, okay is very broad, isn't it? That can cover huge spectrum of things um so that's quite interesting so again reflect clarify to people signal your engagement yeah signal encouragement um avoid you know your prejudice and all your inner stuff yeah um and then hopefully someone will will feel like they're being listened to and and you will be listening to them you know genuinely and if you're using all these skills to to focus yourself a bit um then again it's putting putting our own stuff aside um so if you you know find yourself listening to you know uh, to people you know or, or to strangers or to family or particularly to children um like i was saying with the open and closed questions um you can manage those quite well with children you can give them chance to e express and open up and things but you, you can ask things directly as well which can uh, which can be quite helpful, I would have thought. Um, you are noticing that I'm wearing my hat. It's cold at the front of the house in my study, um, but I thought maybe we'll have a, a very quick look at the garden as well before I sort of sign off. So I'm just going to dash around through the house quick. Oh, some of the granddad's paintings. Bear with. Oh, let's see. Which way are we pointing now? So, there's my little our phones and things. Still growing. Oh, sorry, move the ashtray out of the way. A bit grim. Um, lots of birds in a holly tree. Um, the wood pigeons are probably going to come around in a mo. But yeah, there's a little bit of rustling of leaves and, and wings and a bit of tweeting going on. Looks like the weather's going to be a bit on and off. But yeah, pretty pleasant. Okay, you take care everyone now. I'll speak to you soon. And uh, enjoy the rest of the broadcast for the day. Take care now.